Having just returned from the Pakistan series a week ago and having already played three 2020 internationals, Australia's summer of cricket is about to get in a full swing now. Next up is five one days against South Africa, which gets underway tomorrow in Perth. Then it will be four tests against India and then after all that, the World Cup. Our big question is what are Australia's realistic goals this summer? And as much as I appreciate the opinion of the two men beside me, we'll go to the coach of the Australian yeah. cricket team, Darren Lehman, to join us from Perth. Hello, Darren. Yeah, good guys. How are you all? Fantastic. You are looking absolutely resplendent. We'll get to that in a moment. But is it realistic in the current day, Darren, to win every game you're playing? Because you've got a massive lead in. You've got the four tests against India, the five one days and the World Cup. Can you go out and expect to win every game you play in modern cricket? Well, I know all the country would expect us to, and, and as players, we want to try and win every game we play. So, from our point of view, we're here to play some really good, entertaining cricket, but obviously it starts tomorrow at the Wacker against a, a very strong South African side, and, and we'll get a, a test of where we are for the summer, I suppose. It's a big summer ahead, and we obviously won the T20 series, which was great, under Trevor Bayliss and the boys, the younger boy, boys there. And now it's a, a chance for the big, big stage in the one days and the Test Arena against India. But we should point out, this is not the first time we've had you on our show. We had a, an interview early on with Aaron Finch, and we're just going to relive a classic moment in the Thursday Night Sports Show. Have a look. I've got Buff in the background here, carrying on like an idiot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, in the foreground, I would have said. Yeah, we just saw a slow-mo replay. Can you top that performance tonight? Well, actually, Finchie was just here about two seconds ago and he was thinking about doing the same thing. But, We'd love uh, that. You know, a bit of fun occasionally is always good. You're talking about the one day as a kick-off tomorrow. Saw uh, yesterday on the news Steve Smith cop a short one from Mitchell Johnson, got one on the finger, then read today he's out of the side for George Bailey. Was he dropped, rested, or is he out injured, Buff? No, he's not out injured. Uh, obviously, it's very hard to fit seven batters into six. So Steve Smith's the unlucky one to miss out in this particular game. Uh, it was a really tough call for the selectors. And obviously, you know, there's some blokes in that side that have got to make some runs. They know that. We really want to start well. And Steve Smith's been a, a pivotal player for us over the last 12 months. Darren, what can we expect from some of these young quicks who have been hit with injuries over the last couple of years, Cummins and Pattinson in particular, given that exhaustive schedule that Howie outlined, do you have to be very careful about the way you use those players? Yeah, you do. But having said that, if they're fit and, and we're winning, you know, they play. Uh, that's what happens. So obviously Patterson's a bit uh, of a way yet. Uh, Cummins did really well in the T20s. We've obviously got Hazelwood and Coulter and Isle with Johnson uh, tomorrow, which is exciting for those three, and have a, have a go at the South Africans on a bouncy track. So, you know, they've got some good quicks themselves, Stain, mm. Morkel, Philander. So it's going to be a, a, a great battle. and It's going to be really exciting to watch. So we've got to look after the young guys. But having said that, if they're performing, they play. Just a bit of a change of pace, Boof. We want to talk about facial hair for a moment. Uh, tremendous effort and well done for supporting Movember. <laughs> and well done to everyone supporting that yeah, terrific yeah. charity. I did see you tweeted a few days ago, uh, what sort of... Mo, should I go for? Uh, you know, we're a few days in now. It looks like you're going for Goaty Vember. Um, do you want to tell us what your decision was and, and where it's going to go from here? No, no I sort of uh, just stopped off at the handlebars there. Um, that's just a couple of days, the rest of it, basically. So, uh, look, everyone had, had their views. I just have the view that it's a very poor Mo. <laughs> right. Darren, I think you look quite beautiful. Have you had much beautiful. feedback? Beautiful. He's a beautiful man, Darren yeah, Lee. Yeah, yeah. Have yeah, you very poor had that feedback? feedback. <laughs> yes. Have you had much feedback about the uh, day-night shield round? Because it's quite likely you'll be coach of the first Australian team to play in a day-night test, possibly next year against New Zealand. Is it going in the right direction with the pink ball, the green seam, etc.? Yeah, it seems to be. Uh, players seem to think it was OK. So that, that, they're the main concern. We've got to make sure the players can uh, function with the, with the game of cricket um, if the ball does too much. But it seemed to work pretty well. I know it was a, a, a last day, last two overs of the game, basically in a four-day game in Adelaide it went down to. So the ball produced you know, four days of good cricket there. Um, the other game's finished sort of late on day three. So as long as the ball stands up to it, uh, that's going to be the key, I suppose. What was the decision-making... Um about Glenn Maxwell at number three. We saw the two test series and it's been picked apart and we know that Maxwell was thrust into that number three batting spot in the second test, Darren. Can you take us inside the camp and what was the conversation? How did the conversation unfold that led to him getting that position? Oh, at the end of the day, we, we pick an 11 for the captain uh, and then the captain names the batting order. And, you know, if there's anywhere Glenn Maxwell was going to bat three, it would be the UAE where it didn't bounce at all. Obviously, he didn't have the time he would like in the Test Match Arena, but he played very well in the first in his, in st until he probably played not a great shot, as we've all seen. Um, 
you know, in the UAE, the ball didn't bounce. It, it spun quite a bit, as we know. Um, and we didn't play well. We, we take full responsibility for that as, as a team. We, we certainly should have played better. But, you know, Glenn you know, ended up at three, and, and that was OK. Using Glenn as an example, and it's only an example here, Darren, as a coach, do you actually say anything to the batter when he comes back into the sheds after a shot like that, straight after, an hour after, at the end of the game? Or how do you bring something like that up when you're disappointed as the coach in something you've seen on the field? Well, it depends how angry I am. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes it's straight away, um, but most of the time I let it cool down for an hour or so or, or after the game. Uh, but it really depends. If it needs to be pointed out straight away, then it's straight in there and talk to them about it. Um, and, and that stays obviously behind closed doors. But at the end of the day, it's about getting the best result and how they're going to play the best cricket. Just want to talk about something I noticed the other day. I got a bit of news coverage. Uh, Mitchell Johnson talking about uh, what it what it means to him as he's coming into bowl and how he stays focused and gets that edge. Uh, there was an article that pointed out that he actually has a bit of a song in his head on a loop. And uh, we've got the song. This is true. This is an actual article from the other day. This is the song that he listens to as he's going into bowl. So Mitchell Johnson. Here's why, I'm happy. Really? Hundred percent true. He has that song on a loop. His daughter loves the song, apparently. Book, when you were batting back in the day, which song were you listening to? Oh, that's a great question. I would have had no way to get, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> well, the song selection is so important because if I could just share with you, Brett Lee had a go at it the other week. Uh, actually, no, last season. Have a look at what he chose. Please, give me one oh, chance. No. And the problem is, when you choose your own song, yeah. and particularly if it's a song like this, it can affect your bowling. Have a look. <laughs> he just bowled a white book. I know you can't see it, but they're the perils if you choose the wrong song. Yeah, hey, you never know, but yeah. Hey, Darren, Shane Watson, <laughs> it, all things being equal, um, and without wanting to get you to sort of stick your nose too far out, is he our best number three in the country? Oh, he's a very good player, a valuable player for us. So, you know, in the one day format, he's batted three for the last oh, half a dozen years so or, or open. So I don't see that changing in the near future. And then obviously you're talking more about the Test Match yeah. Arena. Um, and people have asked, can Watson and, and Marsh play on the same side? Well, yes, they can. If they're our best six batters, then, then they can do that. So, um, you know, the captain will figure out where they're going to bat. But if it's Shane Watson at three, so be it. Phil Hughes, just as we let you go, where's Phil Hughes at? Because a lot of judges think yeah. he is the man to play in that top three. Yeah, he's close as well. Um, so I see he got 70 the other day in the Shield game. And you know, now it's a case of there's a couple of Shield games on before the, we pick the first test team. And that's going to be really important for those players to put their hand up. Buff, uh, best of luck in the five uh, yeah, one days against South Africa. Hopefully we see you again in the Network 10 commentary box for the Big Bash. Uh, <laughs> best of luck this week. Thanks very much, guys. Cheers. Thank you.